Yo, my name is Bailey and we are back to full-time reviews on Breaking Banter, meaning I'm gonna be reviewing pretty much everything that I see from now on. So, uh, let's talk about Beautiful Boy. Just a quick plug to say that I've launched my second YouTube channel, Loverboy Media, on which I'm going to be posting my Why I Love series, as well as any other content I feel like experimenting with. It's my own side project, so if you have not already checked that out, please be sure to do so, and then subscribe if you're interested in seeing the content I'm putting out on there. So, Beautiful Boy is directed by Felix Van Groningen and stars Steve Carell as David Sheff, a father who is trying to navigate and combat his son's crippling crystal meth addiction. The son, Nick, is played by the already legendary Timothy Chalamet. Call me by your name, Stans, where you at? With David's wife and ex-wife, played by Maura Tierney and Amy Ryan, respectively. Now, the first thing to note is that this is a true story based on the best-selling memoir of David himself, and that is probably the best way to describe the experience of watching this movie. It's a memoir, a collection of moments that shape the lives of David and his son and the people around them. There's no real propulsion to the journey of this movie in terms of like bold, plotted beats that steer this overarching narrative because it's more about capturing the moment to moment kind of struggle and despair and elation that makes up the cycle of addiction and then sobriety and relapse. While I don't think this movie is gonna work for everyone as a piece of entertainment, I was mostly engrossed in what was unfolding thanks to the characters and the actors playing them hitting every one of their marks impossibly hard. I'll start with Timmy Boy because I feel like this channel is built almost entirely out of Call Me By Your Name fans, so I'm sure y'all are dying to hear how he is in this movie, so I'll put it this way. He's done it again. I was saying to my friend on the way back from seeing this movie that Chalamet exists in this weird zone where he's so authentic that he almost sticks out in every movie he's in, like uh, Lady Bird and Interstellar. He doesn't seamlessly integrate into those movies because he's in a, like another level of being real. So it's almost a testament to how good everyone else in Beautiful Boy is that he just seamlessly integrates into this movie just like he did in Call Me By Your Name. Like, I don't wanna overhype this dude, but he is literally a few roles away from hitting all time great status as an actor. In this movie, he is Nick Chef. He's a ball of angst and confusion and anxiety, and he's a magnet for compassion no matter how many times he fucks up. Because we're not seeing a character, we're seeing a real person. There's absolutely nothing manipulative about this performance, it's just utterly authentic through and through. And while he has the flashier role that I think more people are gonna be talking about, I think it's Steve Carell here that really steals the show, giving probably his best performance at least since Foxcatcher. Steve Carell is also in this really acute zone of realness where he's utterly tangible and human. And I think you kind of feel everything his character is going through at least at the point that you kind of understand how real his performance is being, how unflashy it is. It's really subtle and it's really detailed and some people may want more out of the character and actor that are, that's leading their film, but to me, I think Steve Carell is onto something really special with his work here. And it's not just those two because everyone else in the supporting cast gets their moments to shine and they fully seize them. There's something really interesting going on with the film's visual style too because there's all of these gorgeous greens and golds and earthly browns shot with these crisp wide angle lenses that kind of creates this really huge contrast with uh, this, this drug addiction narrative and this story of family chaos. And you don't usually see those two things put side by side. You know, you look at movies like Requiem for a Dream and Train Spotting, and even something that's probably a bit more in this kind of uh, narrative ballpark, like let's say uh, Basketball Diaries, they've kind of got a bit more of a dirtier, grimier look than this film does. It's not usually what you would expect for a story like this. And so this kind of beautiful, visually comforting approach kind of makes the horrors of this addiction and what the family is going through all the more intense. So it actually really works in that regard. Seeing Nick and David in this scenario, in this environment, keeps this question constantly on your mind, like, 
how did things get this way for these people? And the movie really does cover a lot of that over its runtime. Um, a lot of it is in a non-linear fashion, particularly in the first act, which I enjoyed thanks to some really strong creative uh, visual storytelling with clear motifs and language and a strong juxtapositional editing. It's just that well, the runtime is probably a few scenes too long. There's a handful of scenes that felt like they were kind of a useless partner scene to a scene that had come before, uh, that had already said everything it needed to, and now that second scene kind of serves uh, no purpose. Um, and the couple of times that did happen, my attention was drawn to the fact I was like, oh, this is still going. And that's never really a good thing. I can't say that's going to be an issue for everyone. I think a lot of people are just going to accept it as part of the flow of the movie. But from a writing perspective, they didn't serve any purpose and thus they don't need to be there. The dialogue can be a little clunky early on and the music kind of lacks, uh, instrumental consistency, there's a kind of, it's a bit all over the place. But once this thing hits its stride, or more so uh, once the characters engage you, you'll be in it, you'll be emotionally in it. And theoretically, you should be able to feel the weight of even uh, kind of the smallest moments and the smallest decisions. Does Beautiful Boy offer any solutions for addiction? No, not really. But I think it's more about the hardship for the people involved and thanks to the great performances from its two leads, it kind of cuts to the core of that. Addiction is a cycle that doesn't have any clear or predictable endpoint. And Beautiful Boy argues that the only way to fight it is to be there every step of the way until that endpoint arrives. So those are my thoughts on Beautiful Boy. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you like this video? Well, of course you did. You can subscribe to Breaking Banter down there somewhere and check out Loverboy Media to see the new content I'm producing somewhere else. You can also follow me on Loverboy Media on Twitter and Breaking Banter on Instagram. And if you do want to support this channel, support what we are doing here, you can support us on Patreon. We have a bunch of cool behind the scenes rewards available for you on there. So check it out if you feel like doing so. So thank you to everyone who is supporting us already and I guess I will see you guys in the next video.